Hi folks, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. And the premise of today's video is pretty simple. There is no Tesla killer. There is no Tesla killer on the horizon. And I'm going to give you 10 reasons why. Uh, you know, it's important to understand. Uh, my shirt? Yeah, I shoot raw. You know that I'm a camera fanatic. It's my passion and my business. When you save pictures on your camera, don't save them as JPEGs. Save them in the raw format. They'll edit much better and they'll come out looking and printing much better. Folks, just before we get going, I'm just going to announce a giveaway on our channel. The accessory in my Model 3 that I derive most benefit, especially on long trips, is this set of headrests. Now, this has obviously got a red dragon embroidered on it. Typically, these headrests are unembroidered. So Derek from EV Premium Customs has been kind enough to donate a pair of headrests that I can raffle on my channel or let's say have a drawing on my channel for. So all you got to do is to put a comment in the comment field below that includes the word headrest. So yes, I want a headrest or I want to win the headrest. So I'll be doing the drawing on the next episode that I put up and we'll do a live draw on that show. In addition to that giveaway, Derek has also kindly offered that for those who go on to the website and just purchase the unembroidered headrest, we'll have another drawing and that'll be two months after today's episode goes up. Anyone who purchases within that two month period is also eligible to win a set of embroidered headrests where you can provide your logo or graphic and um, they will create another set of headrests with a custom embroidered logo on it as well. Back to today's episode. So my premise is this. There is no car on the horizon or even here that is about to topple Tesla from its gold medal position. Now many cars are promising to do that. Many companies are promising to do that. The press, of course, usually the press that is subsidized by petrodollars, is always bringing out the next Tesla killer. But my proposition is this. There is no Tesla killer and there will not be. And in this episode here, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I believe Tesla will remain dominant for many, many years to come. Any one of these 10 reasons on their own is not going to ward off all of the opposition, all the competition. And it's quite likely if Tesla only had one of these advantages, they wouldn't be around for that long. But these are compelling reasons, folks. I'm going to give them to you. And look, this might be a little bit of a longer video, but dedicate the time. Commit to watching right through from reason number one to reason number 10. In the course of me setting out these very important reasons, I'm going to be taking video clips, very brief clips, from three websites that I believe every Tesla owner should be watching. I put the links down below as well and you can go find it there. The first is Sandy Munro on his Munro Live channel. The next one is Best in Tesla. And the third one from an Australian YouTuber is Solving the Money Problem. Very unique individuals, very, very clearly formed perspectives. You'll get a much deeper insight into all of the forces that are ranged against Tesla, but all of the reasons why Tesla is winning that race hands down. So without any further delay, let's get into the 10 reasons there is no Tesla killer. Reason number one, and this is of course the elephant in the room. No other company has an Elon Musk. Now that's self-evident because he can't split himself up, but nobody else has a person at the helm with the characteristics and the personality and the drive and the imagination of an Elon Musk. What is it about Elon that is so unique and that the company so depends upon? It's his drive, it's his stubborn refusal to ever give up on anything that he attempts. Maverick independence, he will say the things that are absolutely sometimes crazy. He will say things that cause certain people to tear their hair out, but he's always being authentic Elon. And every one of us who owns a Tesla and who loves what Elon has done, we are so proud of this individual 
who doesn't bow to anyone, who calls balls and strikes, he says what he thinks, and let me give you some examples here and you can see for yourself. So you're not, it's not money for personal expenditures, it's it, what you're doing is, is capital allocation. And it does not make sense to take uh, the, the job of capital allocation away from people who have demonstrated great skill in capital allocation and give it to uh, you know, an entity that has demonstrated very poor skill in, in capital allocation, which is the government. Uh, I mean, you can think of the government essentially uh, as a corporation in the limit. Uh, it, it is, it is a, the government is simply the biggest corporation with a monopoly on violence and, with, and where you have no recourse. Aside from his outspokenness and the fact that he will always speak his mind, is his absolute sheer genius. He has a mind that thinks outside of a box. He has a mind that is dedicated to thinking about things in terms of first principles. He comes up with ideas that others would say it cannot be done. And Elon says, I refuse to accept that it cannot be done. And then he finds a way to do it. It's self-evident, but none of the other companies have anything like an Elon. I like to put it like this. I think this is an original quote from me. I haven't heard anyone else say it. Elon is an inventor who is also the CEO of a company. All of the other CEOs are CEOs who try hard to be inventors. So Elon, an inventor who's also CEO. The others, CEOs who also aim to try and be inventors. And we can clearly see which one works best. Number two, other companies are not going to knock Tesla from its perch because they are internally conflicted. Let me say quickly what I mean by that. Tesla is a pure EV company. Most of the other companies, the vast majority, are ICE car companies, combustion engine companies, aiming at becoming electric vehicle companies. But in that journey, there is so much internal conflict, they simply cannot succeed. Here's why. Most companies like General Motors or Ford have a network of dealers. What do dealers like to do? One, mark up the car. Two, they want to get money from you through maintenance contracts, service contracts, all kind of warranties. And that's their job to stay in business. So if Ford came out tomorrow and said, Within two years, we're wiping out our combustion engine vehicles and we're only selling electric cars. Can you even begin to imagine the pushback from the dealer network? Can you begin to understand how impossible it would be for Ford or General Motors to come out with a pronouncement like that? And here's the problem. The better the electric vehicles that those companies make, the worse their combustion engine offerings look by comparison people are going to start buying electric vehicles from those companies and they're not going to be buying ICE cars. How are the dealers going to handle that? Not well. Let me just say that there will be such internal conflict. There is a way around it. General Motors could come out and say, we are launching a new brand. It's going to be an independent line of cars. They will all be electric and we're going to sell them off the web like Tesla does. You can configure it, you can buy it off the web, it won't go through a dealer, excepting you'll pick up from a dealer. So, have they done that? Nope. Are they about to do that? Nope. You see, here's the problem. Once again, internal conflict. Their network of resellers will be completely up in arms at a plan like that. Because they can see it's just doing an end run around the dealership and GM is taking its sales into its own hands. One final note here. Think about this. If you're making a great electric car and you are General Motors, how are you going to advertise that? No need for gas, minimal maintenance, much better performance. So what are you saying if you advertise the electric car in that fashion? You're saying that the ICE vehicles are crap. They don't have great performance. They have a lot of maintenance. They need gasoline. So everything you say good about your EV line, you are 
speaking bad or speaking ill about your ICE vehicle line. For most of those companies, there's no way around that conflict other than to just push out the dates of their adoption of EV into the far distant future and hope something else comes up. This is the LA Auto Show with an EV theme. There wasn't a single EV in there. GM promised 20 new EVs by 2023, and they brought zero of that to the LA Auto Show. Now this is electric. Basically that there was nobody there, nobody there. You can see a couple of GM guys walking around looking at their own prized vehicles, but nobody, that, nobody came into that area, not while we were there. So you can find Waldo or anybody else, good luck to you. GM marketing, I guess, didn't get the news. There were three engine cutaways and lots of ICE vehicles, but no EVs, no battery technology, no Mary, no President Biden, no people at, either, at any of the booths or the cars. Then we've got the president's pick, and yet GM is down 33%, the worst since 2009. All these other guys are also having problems, but nobody has problems like GM and uh, to some degree Ford. What about Tesla? Up 73%. We got this from Jim Hall, and uh, I think that it kind of sets things up. This is his, not mine. Where uh, we're looking at stolen valor. If you're a vet, stolen valor is a big deal. I have no idea what they're thinking over there, but if you want to have a lot more color on this topic, please watch Gally Russell. His discussions on Tesla and GM are, I never heard Galley ever swear before. <clears throat> he did here. Number three, every other vehicle manufacturing company around is very slow to implement changes, changes on the production line, changes to individual parts or components in the car, changes to the manufacturing process. They work in terms of annual models. So there is a 2021 model and then a 2020 uh, bolt or whatever the car is. And typically changes are made in the background and not actually implemented until the next year's model. Compare that to with Tesla's approach. There are many reports of the speed and the frequency with which Tesla implement changes. Changes big and small, changes in materials, changes in parts, changes in production line assembly techniques. There was one estimate that there are as many as 24 small changes per week that happen on the Tesla production lines. Think of that for a moment. Tesla is constantly reiterating. Why? Well, to improve the car. As better materials, better parts, better techniques are thought up in Tesla, they're implemented right away. Nobody has that approach in car manufacturing. So Tesla is nimble. They're quick to evolve, quick to change, quick to replace outdated parts, components, techniques. They don't wait for an annual anniversary of that model before they implement the changes. Now that might seem frustrating to Tesla owners, but trust me, it is by far for the good of the company as a whole and by far for the reputation of Tesla among the population who eventually end up buying Tesla vehicles. Number four, and this is somewhat related to the previous point, but number four is Elon works from first principles. And what we mean by that is, Elon looks at what is at the core of every activity, every part, every structure, every technique, every manufacturing principle. He looks at what is the underlying principle and then says, how can we comply with that principle quicker, more effectively, more efficiently, with less cost to us? Everything that Tesla develops, be it procedures or components, Elon is looking at how does this tie in with the basic principles of what we're trying to accomplish? That's what we mean by first principles. Now, I'm sure there are people out there that could define it far better than I have, but Elon constantly reminds us that when you make something and you think about its design, you have to go down to first principles first and then think about how to implement those. Now, most of the other vehicle companies are terribly derelict in matching that standard, in living up to that. 
So many of them use off-the-shelf third-party components for their vehicles. Very few of them are inventing something from the ground up. When Tesla built the Model 3 and the Model Y and the Cybertruck coming up now, every single part of that new vehicle is re-engineered. Yes, in many of the cases between the Model Y and the Model 3, there was the ability to reuse some of them, but because they'd already proven themselves. But what General Motors and Ford and Toyota and the others are doing is trying to repurpose parts they've already used in ICE cars, trying to just take the body and the frame of an ICE car and stick electric components and motors and batteries into that vehicle. And that is not the way to do it. So Elon believes in building up from the ground based on first principles. Number five, the other companies lack true vertical integration. And really what it means is keeping a lot of the manufacturing and a lot of the processes in-house. Being able to stay within your boundaries, within your factory, within your sphere of, of control and make things that properly work together. As opposed to grabbing different parts off the shelf from different areas and hoping that when they're all cobbled together, they'll just work. Uh, you remember the episode by Sandy Munro on Munro Live, where he looked at the heating slash cooling system in the Model Y. And he had a table full of components and parts, 30 something, 36 parts. When, when we look at designs, we're not necessarily um, looking at just cost and weight, but we're looking at sometimes the elegance of how things are designed. Seeing these two pumps directly mounted to a manifold on the Tesla, seeing those four pumps mounted separately with their own brackets, sometimes two brackets, that causes us to think, what were those decisions that went in um, that went into designing this? And Ben and Sandy, you can hit on the amount of, of hoses that, that we had on the Mach-E versus the amount of hoses that we had on the Tesla. So we have a look at this, and we have a look at that, and we just start, <laughs> we, say, we decided we'd put down a little bit of, uh, of the, uh, a little bit of the size and weight associated with this design versus uh, what we have here at Tesla. So if we look at the Mach-E, the number of uh, pipes and whatnot, if you stretch them all out into one, you'd have 18.42 meters. That's quite a ways. If you look at the Model Y, you're looking at 6.35 meters. If you look at the number of hoses here on the Mach-E, you're looking at uh, 35 parts. Over there, you got 10. Okay, so we go back to grams. This, obviously, we're, we're not gonna put that into grams. You can add two zeros if you want, but at the end of the day, look at the weight just in the fluid, just in the fluid. Now, people have been talking about the batteries. Oh, we got a bigger battery, so we're gonna get longer range. You aren't gonna get range if you can't get rid of weight. So vertical integration means that a car company should manufacture as much as they can in-house, especially components that depend on each other. So that if you're making electronic components, having them just off the shelf might result in many more failures, many more components that have to be installed in the car all around the car, instead of focusing attention on building something that is custom built for their car and keeping that in-house. I mean, Tesla even make their own seats. They decided if they wanted good quality and they wanted the seats to meet their design imperatives, they had to make them for themselves, and they do. Number six, who owns the mind space will sell the cars. What am I talking about here? I conducted an interesting little experiment. I went into our local shopping mall, Lynn Valley Mall, feeling very much like a spare part, standing in the mall, and uh, you know how it is approaching strangers now in these times of COVID. They're all wearing masks, of course. And I asked those who would participate in my little mini survey, random survey. And I basically said to them, listen, I'm creating an episode for my YouTube channel, and I'm conducting a survey with just one question. Would you mind answering it? I only had one person who said no. All the rest were happy to do it. Not all wanted to be on camera, as you'll see in the little video clip coming up. Um, many of them just asked me to point the camera to the side of them, but they were happy for their voice to be on. Here's the stunning result. Out of 20 individuals that I approached, 
a full 17, 10, 7, 17, named Tesla as the first vehicle that popped into their mind when I said to them, in the field of electric cars, who, who do you think of? Who comes to mind? So the question is, if I talk about electric vehicles, what brand comes to your mind? Kia. What's the first electric car that comes to your mind? The Cadillac. What, what is the car that pops into your mind? Tesla. And you drive one? Yes, I have one. And you? Mitsubishi RMF, because I have one. Ah, okay. <laughs> What's the first vehicle that you would think of? Tesla. So it can be Tesla. Okay, so the question was, first car that comes to your mind, and you said Tesla. How about you? Tesla. Yeah. Tesla. Tesla. Tesla, both of you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's Tesla. Tesla. 17 out of 20. Take a moment to think about that. Tesla owns the mind space. When people think about going electric, they're already thinking about Tesla as a company, as a solution to their decision to go electric. Tesla does not pay for advertising. And yet, I'm seeing more and more Teslas in TV documentaries, TV series, movies, I'm seeing a Tesla pop up here and there. Why is that? Well, because Tesla has become the cool EV. It's the one that looks beautiful, performs unbelievably well. Everyone's talking about. Tesla owners are proselytizing like you cannot believe. Look at me. Own the mind space and you own the market. And Tesla have already achieved that with no paid advertising, just enthusiasts like myself. And that is why they're gonna stay number one for a long, long time to come. So when we talk about Mindspace and we talk about how Tesla occupies it, many people are not even familiar with the range and variety of electric vehicles that are already out there. And they're not killing Tesla. Let me flash a few up on the screen here and you can just see what's available, especially in the US market. Take a look at this chart here that demonstrates Tesla's complete dominance in terms of sales just in the year 2021, despite the fact that there are numerous, as I've just shown you, numerous competitors in the EV space. Number seven, the charging network. This is an obvious one. From the very first time that Tesla launched their original Roadster and then the Model S, they began building charging stations and they began placing them at appropriate places alongside of freeways or major connecting highways. Tesla have built out their own charging network. So Tesla originally gave it free, but now of course is charging for those who come and use those public facilities. At the moment, Tesla is the only vehicle manufacturing company that has made a proprietary charging network worldwide. Go on to YouTube sometime and go and look up videos of people testing the new uh, Mark E, uh, the Ford Mustang Mark E, testing the Bolt, testing any of the new electric cars that are out. And look at the challenges and the difficulties they had as they try to find charging locations, as they try to get those chargers to actually communicate and connect with their vehicles, and the amount of wasted time, and then sometimes coming to a charge location and finding it's completely full and having to wait because there were only one or two fast charges present. Tesla made a powerful decision to build its own charges. The other guys are just hoping for these large public networks that will crisscross America. Tesla is now at the position of thinking about offering their charge stations to non-EV vehicles. And look, many of us are hugely up in arms about that because we know how our Tesla locations will be flooded. But on the other hand, that will drive Tesla to manufacture many more locations if they're making a profit out of charging. So there it is. No other company has got on board with their own charge network. 
and people have just left it to Tesla or many of the public utilities that they're hoping will be built in the future. But Elon's view of this is, why would I risk selling people a car and then they have to struggle to find where to charge it? I'd rather keep that in-house, something like vertical integration, and give people a Tesla charging location, and that's what he has successfully done. Number eight, over-the-air updates. There are few companies that use this feature properly. Yeah, some of them now have the ability to fix bugs and to do firmware changes at very, very sporadic or sparse intervals. And those companies have found great challenges in trying to get their over-the-air updates to work properly. Tesla has had over-the-air updates not just as a way of fixing bugs in the firmware, although that has been the case, obviously, but to add new features to the car, to improve a car's performance, like reduced braking distance, to add new features like new streaming services. There have been too many to tabulate here, but the bottom line is that the over-the-air update method of Tesla communicating with its fleet has been immensely successful, and it's been one of the features that have attracted people to a Tesla. Buy the car now, have it get better over time thanks to the OTA updates, over-the-air updates. Until they start to use over-the-air updates as an actual feature, uh, a value proposition for their cars, until they begin to advertise it that way, they're not going to knock Tesla off its perch. Number nine, manufacturing capacity. How many factories does Tesla have in which manufacturing takes place? Well, of course, we've always had the one in Fremont, California. One in China is up and running and producing Model 3, Model Y. Uh, Giga Berlin is close to opening, should be opening in the next few weeks. And then, of course, there's Giga Texas, Austin, Texas. So four gigantic manufacturing locations that work on manufacturing batteries and vehicles. Now, Tesla's always had an aggressive push to develop more gigafactories. Elon has already said that there have to eventually be dozens of these factories. Right now, there are uh, plans, at, well, at least they're talking about, India as another destination, other locations in Europe. And Elon understands very well that if you own manufacturing capacity, you'll have no problem selling them, as I'll talk about in the next point, and you'll have sufficient capacity to keep at that number one position. If you drop behind in manufacturing capabilities, then the big three automakers and all the other guys with d very deep pockets will be in a great position to simply pass you by. And that brings us on to number 10. And number 10 is manufacturing efficiency. This insane speed that we're talking about that is uh, tough working with, um, because I think you also used uh, an example of the, the airbags that Tesla makes, uh, the chip that goes into that airbag could be different next, next week. Yes, uh, okay, that, yes, absolutely. So that, to me, that <laughs> there must be a really sophisticated software or something that controls all of this. Um, how, how do they manage all of this supply that is going to change from week to week? Tesla is an awesome mix of the highest tech I've seen anywhere. I, I can talk about it. I've worked on the F-35, which is arguably the most advanced joint strike fighter on planet Earth. I've seen more advanced stuff at Tesla uh, and pencil on paper. Pencil uh, on paper. The, the simplest, the most, oh, okay. the absolute most yeah. simple. Yeah. So you have this interesting mix when you're going that fast of like hand shoveling sandbags, for, for example, and crazy awesome self uh educating robotics and <laughs> and they work side by side and it, it's this very cool low-tech high-tech symphony i mentioned earlier and i said i would come back to it that the ceo of vw has actually invited elon to address his executives his managers of departments why well with a view to talking about manufacturing efficiency the CEO of VW was horrified by the fact that Tesla will spend about 10 hours on the production line per vehicle, where his company, it's more than double, and it could even be three times as long with certain lines. If we cannot improve our manufacturing speed, we are going to be horribly behind Tesla 
forever, for the foreseeable future. It's not that they don't see the problem. It's that they don't have a solution to it. Here's one of the reasons. All of those major companies have their unions to contend with. Now, I know there was a big fuss made about the fact that uh, unions tried to unionize the Tesla factory. They did not succeed. And that there's this rivalry going on where Joe Biden, the president of the U.S., is completely ignoring Tesla and pretending that the only players in the game are General Motors and Ford and that they are driving EV development and that he's so proud of those companies. And Tesla's shunned as if they do not even exist. Why? They don't have unionization of their workforce. But while unionization is, of course, great for the workers, it also holds back many of those companies from rapid development, from things that might harm unions and workers. Those companies cannot do that. So this is going to be a problem going forward. Tesla is only getting quicker at its manufacturing. They're only becoming more efficient. Every single month that goes by, Tesla find new efficiencies on the production line and the amount of time for manufacturing one vehicle drops all the time. Quote, for a long time, the rest of the auto industry was basically calling Tesla and me fools and frauds, Musk said in an interview with the Financial Times. Quote, they were saying electric cars wouldn't work. You can't achieve the range and performance. And even if you did, nobody would buy them. Just want to take a quick interlude here. This was 4IQ thinking at the time. It was obvious. The data was already available showing the predictable cost declines of lithium ion batteries. It was also obvious to anyone with a functioning brain who actually sat down and took the time to think a little bit, even if it hurt, that given the fact that electric vehicles were a new technology being produced at a very low volume, as volumes increased, costs would come down, not only as a result of economies of scale, but as a result of maturing technology and new techniques for manufacturing these products with far fewer parts than an internal combustion engine vehicle. Again, if your brain works and you think, huh, less stuff goes in and it's not a mature technology and the battery costs are predictably declining, these things are going to keep getting cheaper until some point in the future they're cheaper to purchase than an ICE vehicle and then a few years after that they're much cheaper and then a few years after that they're even cheaper than that. This is why it just blows my fucking mind that these morons in Legacy Auto didn't even take the time to think. And now, after Tesla's demonstrated what was evident 10, 15 plus years ago, that EV costs would come down, especially as they continued to grow in scale, suddenly now all of these Muppets are panicking and urgently rushing to transition to EVs. And as I've said a trillion times, for most legacy automotive manufacturers, it's now too late. Musk believes climate change activists help to nudge car makers toward more sustainable technology, but he claims there is one overriding reason they are finally ready to go electric. Quote, until we started taking market share from them in a meaningful way, they didn't react. He is far from alone in that view. Bob Lutz, a former vice chair of General Motors and president of Chrysler, who was once doubtful about Tesla's chances of survival. <laughs> doubtful is a massive understatement. If you're a long-term viewer of this channel, you'll have seen many of my reaction videos to some of the comments from Lutz. In essence, he said, Elon's crazy, Tesla are doomed, the company's going bankrupt, wouldn't touch it with a thousand foot pole. But Lutz now calls Musk's impact on the auto industry, quote, unbelievable, nothing short of incredible. And I have to give credit to Bob Lutz here. It's great to see him change his mind and acknowledge not only was he wrong, but go from one end of the spectrum, Tesla's absolutely doomed, to what they've done is absolutely incredible. If only more people were so easily capable of changing their mind. Pointing to the inroads it has made in even Europe's luxury car markets, Lutz says, quote, this is why Mercedes-Benz and BMW are so afraid of him. Those are my 10 reasons. I'm sure I've left some out. If you can think of any reasons that Tesla is going to stay ahead, is definitely going to stay ahead, that I've not mentioned, please go put them in the comments below. Uh, I think that this, it's a fascinating topic. I'm sure there are those of you out there who will completely disagree with me. If you think that Tesla is going to be beaten by some of these big manufacturers and you've got good reasons for it, please share them with me. In the first week of any video of mine i always go into the comment section i read every comment and i try and respond to it thank you once again all of you for your support of the channel don't forget we do have a paypal donation link over here and if you're able to support the channel in any small way we appreciate that greatly so thank you once again and we'll see you in the next episode